Hello and welcome to Cubase Elementary. This is a series of videos for Cubase Elements users, but of course everything is applicable for artists and pro users as well. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at little handy tips that you can do when editing MIDI quickly. So what we have here is a MIDI performance that was made on an electronic drum kit. And just by looking at it, you can see that there's all sorts of velocities and it doesn't look particularly uh, tight to the grid. So let's have a quick listen to how it is at the moment. So where do we start? So it's not particularly in time. There's a couple of extra snare hits we don't want and the velocities are pretty much all over the place. Obviously this is only a few bars. So the tips I'm gonna share with you are gonna help you clean all of this up very, very quickly. Um, especially if you've got like a five minute song or maybe eight five minute songs for an album, you don't want to be in there literally looking at every single hit. I'm not saying that you won't have to do a little bit of uh, fine tuning by hand, but you can do a lot of MIDI editing in fairly large brush strokes. So uh, let's have another listen. So the first thing I'd like to do is we're going to choose the selection tool here and we're going to select all of the bass drum hits. Now, I want my bass drum to be a lot more punchy. I would hazard a guess that the average velocity is probably about 80 or 90 there. So what we can do is we can go up to MIDI, come down to functions and go to velocity. And I want all of this to have a velocity of 124, which would be a nice punchy bass drum sound. And of course, once you're happy with everything and you've converted it to audio for mixing, you can always adjust the volume of the bass drum using automation. So if I hit OK, we can see that the bass drum is now at a constant velocity of 124. Let's have another listen. Great. Next, we move on to the snare drum. Let's highlight all of these. And the thing that really sticks out is there's a couple of mishits here. As I say, this was recorded on a MIDI drum kit, so he's obviously dropped the stick onto the snare drum in two places where he shouldn't have. So what we can do here is obviously you could just go in and manually delete all of these. But as I say, if you have a five minute song or indeed lots of songs to edit, this is a much faster way of doing it. So again, we come up to MIDI come down to functions and go to delete notes. And I would say that is probably definitely under 70 because obviously velocity goes from naught to 127. So if we click okay, those two rogue notes have now disappeared. Perfect. However, there's quite a disparity in the velocity of the snare anyway. So like I did last time, what I think I'm going to do is just have a quick look. So that was at 120, 86, 115. So I don't want the snare to be all exactly the same because that would be a bit boring and a bit mechanical. So what I can do is using the same function as I used the first time, come up to MIDI, functions, velocity, and you can choose an upper and a lower. So I'm going to set the upper at 120 and the lower at 114. Obviously you can choose whatever numbers you like, but this is just for the demo purposes. And then we hit OK. So that's worked well. And the velocity is now between 114 and 120 for every snare hit. Right. Let's have a look at the open hi-hat. So again, slight differences in velocity. So here we have 83, 108. 97, 97. So I'm going to select all of those. And as before, functions, velocity, 
we're going to make this 100 to 95. Again, makes it a lot more constant. And lastly, we have the hi-hat here. So we can see that there's a few hits that are a lot softer than the others. But the range is somewhere between 127, which is quite loud. And the softer hits are 72. That one's 113. So as before, select all of those. And I think what I'm going to do for this is again, we're going to muck around with the velocity and make it somewhere between 120, oh, wrong way, and 110. So it's still got the da 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 pattern because that's how it was played. So all we've done is we've introduced a floor and a peak for the velocity for the hi hat there. Now let's have a listen to that. So that sounds a bit better, but obviously it's still rather out of time. So what you could do is come to quantize it and you could choose randomize zero ticks, which will quantize it to be exactly, which would be rather like a drum machine. Or what I prefer to do is if you, if you set the ticks to about three or four, that just gives a little bit of human feel to the beat, but still makes it pretty much on the grid, which is where you want it. So let's just do that. So we change randomized to four, then we hit the quantize button up there. Now let's have a listen. Much better. Uh, you might have noticed that if you go up to MIDI and functions, there's actually quite a lot of things that you can do, like mirror, reverse. But I'm finding that I'm using velocity and delete notes the most, but obviously have a play around with the other ones. But I have found that this is a very quick and easy way to quickly tidy up MIDI information, especially on drums. So that's about it for this video. Um, please subscribe if you are a Cubase Elements user or you just like these sorts of tips for Cubase in general. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.